Welcome to part 34 of the Basic Training Booster Pass Edition. Today we're going to cover everything you need to know to play Daisy Cruiser on 150cc. We're going to kick it old school and start by going through what I used to call my level 1 version of the run, where the recommended build is Daisy, Teddy Buggy, Rollers, and Paper Glider. Hold down the item button during the countdown so that you can use a mushroom as soon as the run begins, and then immediately right hop into a left drift to build up a mini turbo. Rinse and repeat after going up the little ramp, and then immediately start a right drift so that you can mini turbo trick off the ending ramp. Releasing the mini turbo at the same time as the trick gives you a much bigger boost to your speed than if you were to mini turbo and then trick, or vice versa. The problem is that there's this Goomba off to the right, and so that left drift that we did before the mini turbo trick is very important as it allows you to avoid it while doing all of this. After that, trick off the lip of the pool and then start a wide left drift to grab the three coins. Tighten up a bit before grabbing the last coin so that you can get an Ultra Mini Turbo, and then we're on to the dining room section. In this version of the run, it's not super complicated. Just left drift into the room and then follow it up with a single right drift. Then do a couple more drifts before coming out of the interior of the ship. For this last right drift, you want a left hop to release and then start another wide right drift such that you land on top of this little ramp before going back outdoors, because this is going to allow you to build up an extra Mini Turbo before the final long right turn. You're going to have to widen up a bit to grab coins 8 and 9, and be warned that this turn has this really weird tendency to make you think it's a lot tighter than it actually is. Point being, don't try to be too aggressive with your drifting here. Finish up the lap with another counter hop right drift at the staircase, and then follow it up with some alternating drifts. Lap 2 is pretty much the same as lap 1, other than the fact that we're going to grab our final coin on the left hand side of the track just before going into the interior of the ship. The only other difference is that we're going to use our mushrooms on that weird right turn at the end of the lap. So that's the quote unquote level 1 strats. Let's talk alternative, read between the lines, try hard strats, starting with my personal best. There's three key differences here. Well, four if you count the fact that we're using Bitty Buggy instead of Teddy Buggy. The first actual difference is that on lap 1, I build up an additional mini turbo before that first mini turbo trick. This requires a couple of extra counter hops before the left drift, and it makes the timing for the mini turbo trick super tight. I only do this on lap 1 though, because laps 2 and 3, I have a bunch of coins, which makes me go a lot faster. And just being real with you all, my drifting skills are lacking to such an extent that I have to choose between getting that extra mini turbo or being able to do the mini turbo trick. And the latter just saves way more time. The next major difference is that I do snaking in the interior of the ship. On lap 1, it's a left to right to left pattern, but once again, for laps 2 and 3, I'm doing something a little bit different because of the pattern of the tables here. So I just do left drift, right drift, double counter hop, right drift. The thing is, the only reason I'm able to do this at all is because I've learned the pattern of how those tables are moving from left to right for the particular pace that I tend to be on here. So you may need a different setup if you're trying to replicate my strats. The final difference between my level 1 run and the more tryhard versions is how I use the mushrooms on laps 2 and 3. I still use them around that final turn, but in my PB, I use them when coming out of the interior of the ship so that I can build up a super mini turbo while avoiding the wall on the right hand side of the track. The positioning is super tight here, and the only recommendation I really have is to delay your mushroom until you're basically on the ramp so that you can use its momentum to help you build up additional space between your cart and the wall. But that's it for the strats, let's talk about the track a bit more while checking out my current personal best. And as always, if you've been finding the video helpful so far, Consider dropping a like and a comment so that other people who are looking for tips and tricks on this course can find the video more easily, which also really helps me out. Thank you very much for that, I really appreciate it. So, Daisy Cruiser. You know, it's kind of unfortunate that there aren't any meaningful shortcuts on this track because that makes it heavily favor front running online. And the reason that I'm not a big fan of those types of tracks is because if something goes wrong really at any point during the race, it can be incredibly hard to claw your way back up to the front. However, even though this track might not necessarily be my cup of tea online, man oh man was it a lot of fun to time trial. I learned the track on stream last week where I set a personal best of 137.7, and I was originally planning on just leaving it there and using that run for this video. But I knew that there was some free time save sitting on the table and just mentally could not allow myself to let it go until I got the quote unquote perfect run, at least by my standards. And it's funny because during that stream, I was trying to do all the lap 1 strats with the extra counter hops on laps 2 and 3 because that's what the world record does. It turned out that this made the mini turbo trick timing way too tight, and so I originally resigned myself to just getting the mini turbo and foregoing any attempt at the mini turbo trick. Then I put the level 1 run together and was just trying to find a consistent way to get the mini turbo trick on all 3 laps so that I could explain it to you 
and accidentally found out that it was both faster and more consistent than the strat that I was originally trying to do. All of this kind of made Daisy Cruiser not necessarily the most difficult track ever, but one where the difficulty felt more puzzle-like than outright soul-crushing, which is definitely a nice change of pace from Athens Dash, for example, which heavily over-indexed the other way. I guess to summarize, I like the track because I like the track, and also because it's Daisy-themed and she's the best princess. I said what I said, don't at me. And that's everything you need to know to play Daisy Cruiser on 150cc. If you enjoyed the video, consider becoming a subscriber because I release new tutorials all the time and you definitely don't want to miss the ones coming up. Thank you all very much for taking the time out of your day to do some basic training, and as always, I will see you in the next video.